Hi everybody, welcome to the So Essential vlog. I'm Lucy and I'm here today to share my latest makes with you. Everything I talk about today is available on our lovely website and you'll find the link to our website below. You'll also find links to all the products I talk about today so they're nice and easy to find as well. And then there's also lots of tutorials I refer to which are all available on our YouTube channel as well. And if you do like what you see today, please like and subscribe because every week on a Friday we deliver another dose of sewing inspiration in the form of a video to our channel. So you'll be the first to hear about that and get some juicy sewing inspiration ready for the weekend. Okay, so let's get started with my first make, which is the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo dress, which is the, what I'm wearing now. So it's a peasant style, smock style dress, which we all know have been super, super popular in recent years. It's got a lovely gathered ruffled waist, which I chose to make. So it's got an exposed gather on the top. You layer the skirt after you've gathered it on top of the bodice and attach it there. And then the same, I chose these lovely sort of trumpet sleeves, which have got a quite a 70s vibe. And anyone who watches our channel will know that I love that fashion era. And they've got, I've gone for the same sort of ruffled effect here on the sleeves where they're attached. Very simple bodice, bust starts. And then I chose to also add a waist tie at the back just to cinch things in a little bit um, just because it is a very loose fitting style for me and at first I wasn't sure if I wanted to go for it or not so I thought well I'll put those on and then I've got the option if I want to cinch things in but I'm really glad I made this my inspiration for this dress was my lovely friend Caroline who is always looks amazing and always wears beautiful dresses and she t when this fabric came in stock it reminded me of a smock dress that she wore last year when I met up with her um, and she just looked gorgeous in it and I'd been really sort of umming and ahhing whether I'd feel comfortable in this sort of style and then I remembered her dress and I thought yes I'm gonna go for it and I'm really glad I did I'll just give you some more details about the pattern. You can make a smock top as well. Um, you can also go for different um, different sleeve styles as well so there is just a plain um, bracelet sleeve and then there is also the option as well for not having the ruffle on the skirt and the trumpet sleeves but having it's still being gathered but those gathers sort of being sewn into the seam allowance so you haven't got this exposed ruffled edge there but I went for that because I just wanted something that was a bit um, dressy it was the idea behind this dress really was for you know when we're allowed to going out for meals and that sort of thing and um, the size range goes from a 1 to a 10 the 1 is a 30 inch bust 24 inch waist and 33 inch hip the 10 is a 48 inch bust 42 inch waist and 51 inch hip i cut a straight size 3 which is a 34 bust 28 waist and 37 inch hip um, but i did make some adjustments to it so the first adjustment I made was my high round back and forward shoulder adjustment which I make on everything I ever make because I've just got hunched forward shoulders. There is a tutorial on our, um, our YouTube channel on exactly how I do that so if you want to you'll be able to find that. Um, but the other thing I did, I made those adjustments to the pattern automatically and then I decided to just make up a quick twirl which is like a practice running cheap fabric um, and I did that in calico just to check although it's a very very simple bodice and simple fit and I know Tilly patterns do generally fit me quite well in my problem area of the shoulders I thought I'm just going to make a quick toilet because I know bust starts often are in the wrong place for me so I sewed this very crude um, mock-up in calico which took all of 10 minutes I just cut out the front and back pieces stitched them together at the shoulder seams and side seams and then tried it on and what I could see was the bust starts are here and my bust point was up here so you can see you know on the real dress I've, I've moved the bust starts and they are can't feel them <laughs> they're, they're in the right place anyway they're here my bust points here so they're pointing in the right place they're giving me that shape in the right place whereas if I'd have just stuck with how the pattern was originally they would have been down here somewhere and just wouldn't have been creating the right shape at all so that was well worth doing just double checking the fit um, but 
that's something I do because I know what my problem areas are. You know, I know that my high round back and forward shoulder, that's a given. But I know my other problem areas are um, bust darts tend to not be in the right place on a lot of patterns for me. And also sometimes the armholes aren't in the right place as well. So on this initial twirl, when I tried it on, I marked where the seam allowance was there on the armhole as well. And I could see, oh yeah, Tilly's got that great block that fits me, which is unusual, and they're in the right place. Um, I did do a tutorial on how to raise or lower a bust dart. So that's on our channel as well. You'll be able to find that. Um, here's the pattern piece after I'd made the adjustment. It's quite a simple and straightforward adjustment to make. And then I did make another quick twirl after I'd done that just to check I was happy with the fit. But literally, I mean, this is calico, it's, you know, it's very cheap fabric. And it was literally a 10 minute job just to, to do that and check the fit. And I'm really glad I did because, you know, with this dress, because it's a loose fitting skirt, I thought it was really important that the bodice fitted really well. Um, so I'm glad I just took that time to do that. In terms of construction, it's a very, very easy sew. Um, one technique I did was a special technique with the neckline facing just to give it a nice finish and I did a tutorial on that last week so you'll be able to see that um, but other than that very very straightforward the only mishap I had was that when I you have to layer the gathered skirt over the bodice and stitch it down and when I did that, I, I realised, I did it in a real rush, which is very naughty and I shouldn't have done, but I realised after wearing it once that I'd literally just caught the fabric in one of the sections. Um, so I had to very carefully unpick that, reposition it, and it was really difficult because I'd already removed the gathering stitches and what have you. Um, and then I re-stitched that down. Um, but that was my own silly fault, you know, that was rushing. I, I wanted to wear the dress on the Friday night, so I rushed, 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 rushed and made that little mistake. But overall, you know, lovely straightforward construction. There's no fastenings, there's no zips or buttons or anything like that. Um, you know, it came together really well. Um, you just got to do your bust starts. The gathering stitches were fun as well. I, I quite enjoy doing that until he suggested three lines of stitches, three rows of stitches to get really nice even gathers and that works really well. I did add a waist tie as well just because it's a more loose fitting design than I would normally go for. I just sewed some little, I created some waist ties using the pattern piece from the Shelby dress and then I just stitched those into the side seams above where the um, waist seam is. Um, and that just gives me that option there to gather everything in a bit. But yeah, overall, really, really happy with the dress. Absolutely love wearing it. I've worn it three times already. Um, I haven't mentioned the fabric, actually. That is, it's a polyester fabric, a polyester crepe, and it's a matte one so it's um lovely and silky smooth but it hasn't got that high shine it's a nice matte one um and the drape and the movement and everything is just perfect for this sort of dress so yeah one well, very very happy customer here i think um it's a fantastic pattern and as i said everything i use to make it is available on our site you'll find the links below so the next pattern or make i want to share with you is this gorgeous maxi skirt which is a new look six four five six it's a wrap skirt so you literally that's how it fastens the uh, there's no zips or buttons or anything like that you do do a buttonhole to pass the waist ties through to fasten it um, but this is a super simple super easy so it's got a center back seam and i'll just show you the length it is a full maxi length and it does it is sort of a line it does kind of um go a line towards the hem so it has got that slight a line on it um i made it in this gorgeous gorgeous polyester crepe fabric which pressed beautifully um sewed beautifully again it's got a matte finish and i just love the colorway i just love that orange i just think it's gorgeous um, and one of my favourite things about this skirt as well is I think it's so versatile for all year round wear. So my plans are, um, I mean certainly even in the winter, I'm, I'm planning to wear this on Friday, um, I'm just going for a meal so um, I'll wear it with this sleeveless turtle neck top and then I'll put my leather jacket on and some ankle boots and I'll be good to go. Um, 
and I think it styles really well like that. But then equally, I could wear a long sleeve turtleneck and um, my white trainers for during the day. In the summer, I could wear strappy vest tops, I could wear strappy sandals, high heeled for going out, but then I could style it down with flat sandals as well during the day. So it's just a style that I've seen absolutely loads recently. It's all the other look as well, just with a simple t-shirt, you know, and trainers and a leather or denim jacket. And I know I keep talking to you guys about this look because I keep coming across patterns that I could do it with. Um, and yeah, I just realised I've got nothing like that in my wardrobe at all. So again, pushing those boundaries, trying different styles, um, which I've really enjoyed doing the last couple of years. And I feel like I'm starting to really find my style because I am doing that instead of getting stuck in a rut and keep going for the same looks all the time. I am noticing things, you know, getting inspiration from people out and about sometimes thinking, oh, that looks lovely, and then making it up for myself. So I'll talk to you a bit about the um, pattern. It's New Look 6456. The size range goes from a 6, which is a 23 waist and 32 and a half inch hip up to an 18 which is a 32 inch waist and a 42 inch hip. Now I made a straight size 14 which is a 28 waist and a 38 hip and I did check with the pattern pieces first before I cut the fabric out because I know sometimes the big four pattern companies there's a lot of ease in them and sometimes you know the size they recommend is a bit too big but actually it was bang on with this I definitely couldn't have gone any smaller than a size 14 the side seams are in the right place for me um, yeah it just feels comfortable I feel like I've got plenty of overlap here that I'm not going to be revealing anything you know or having any wardrobe malfunctions there's plenty of overlap there um, and I think that's also thanks to this, the style of the pattern pieces as well and the way that they're drafted um, but yeah, that, that was what I did. I cut a straight size, so it was dead easy to fit. And I, I think, you know, I think this would be a great pattern for a beginner because it is really easy to fit. For most people, or for a lot of people, fitting waist and hips is easier than trying to worry about armholes and busts. And there's a bit more going on upper body than there is lower body to think about. Um, but also, as I said at the start, you know, there's no fastenings on this, no zips or buttons. The hardest technique you'll have to do is just sew a buttonhole in the um, waistband to thread your waist tie through. Um, and also there's some lovely long seams on it um, that you can just practice like your sewing or your overcasting or your overlocking on as well. Quite therapeutic and enjoyable, I find, whizzing through those long seams. Um, so yeah, it was really easy to make, really easy construction. Um, with the waist ties, I did a little trick which I like to do whenever I've got to make long rectangles of fabric. There's an overlocker trick I use which is on our site. Um, and I fold the, I run off a massive long chain of stitches longer than the piece of fabric on my overlocker. And then I put that down the middle of the fa the right side of the fabric, fold the right sides together, and then stitch with the overlocker down the raw edge at the right seam allowance, making sure that the chain of stitches doesn't get caught in the in the stitching that I'm doing. Um, and then you can just use the chain of stitches to pull it through and turn it through. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a really good way of making things like waist ties. The only thing is then, I did have to hand sew the ends together, but I quite like a little bit of hand sewing and I'd rather do that really than faffing around with other methods. So yeah that was one technique that I did use and also when I positioned the waist tie here with the waistband um, initially I positioned it a little bit too high so it didn't quite match up if you can see there we've got a lovely you know right angle where the bottom of the waist tie is matching up beautifully with the bottom of the waistband um, and I got it initially a little bit too high up so I had to adjust that and move that down to make sure it sat properly. Um, I stitched in the ditch to secure the waistband down and that was really lovely therapeutic technique to do for anyone who doesn't know it's when you stitch down the actual seam um, and you have to be really sort of you have to really take time and be methodical um, with it and be really careful to get it accurate um, but yeah that's how I secured that but overall you know something that was so quick and easy to make I feel 
great in it you know it's really enjoyable to wear and just the styling options you know and the versatility I, I really do think these fabrics you know at the moment it's autumn here in the UK and I'm thinking pumpkins and Halloween it's like giving me those vibes um, but then equally in the summer I love a bit of orange as well um, you know so I do think it's a really versatile pattern a versatile fabric and I'm just really happy with this make so I do hope you like what you see today just remember everything I've talked about is available on our website you'll find the links to our website and all the products I talked about today below and if you like what you see please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time